Oh my god! And on his calf, he had a very clear bite mark. Oh no! Um, That's wild. Of course, that kid just thought it was hilarious. Right? Yeah, of course. Um, but there was a lot of that kind of stuff, and that doesn't happen on the show. There, you know, people get touched occasionally. People get a little bit of a nudge once in a while, but nothing like that. Hmm. Um, and I think I don't think things have turned back from that. I, I think things have. I, I don't think I don't think things have ever really settled. Settled down. Wow. Did it two more years, and and we did a much better job of it. You know, they brought in a an actual psychic. You know, that first year, that answer but was, you know, who wants to be the psychic tonight? Yeah. Um. But then they they brought in a, an actual sensitive, and and things things got a little bit calmer. But I don't think anything ever really settled down after that. And you know, the other thing is, it's investigated a lot, and and I know that. Uh, there's one group that's on television a lot who I, I won't name, but who has a reputation in the paranormal community of opening doors everywhere they go and not closing them when they leave. So, you know, they did a show on the ship years ago, and they didn't seem to get much, but I know that the ship got much more active after they left. Interesting. Um, so these kinds of things happen, and, then, you know, that's one of the great things about the ship. There are so many spirits that you really don't know where they're going to turn up. They can, anything can really happen anyway. It's really, really interesting. Did you ever see the movie Hell House, LLC? Yeah. was That That was the one where they were doing the haunted house thing. Yeah, right? in a haunted house. It just um, reminded me of that very on, second. On, on, on Prime? Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. Yes. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that just reminded me of when you talked about the mark. Um, so... <laughs> I'm a digression guy. That, that was cool. <laughs> um, so what do most investigators typically see? So it's not usually bite marks, but no. people see like full body apparitions. A lot of shadows. More shadows than anything okay. else. The ship is an audio gold mine. Really? I mean, we, we have some audio, we have some audio that is far and away class A audio. I mean, you know, and, and one of the great things about the audio on the ship, in my experience anyway, is that it almost always is contextual. You know, we have a we have a an unbelie an unbelievable EVP of a woman. We're standing outside the surgical area on the ship, and we're talking about how to get in there because what they've done is they've bolted a piece of plexiglass on the door. There's a lot of stuff in there, and, and they don't generally don't like people in there. And we go in, when we investigate. We go. And we're talking about how we're going to get in there. And two of the people are bucking up to see who's going to climb over the plexiglass. And I'm telling them that I can get into the back door if they give me five minutes. And as we're discussing this, the woman who's with us says, well, I just know that when I get in there, I want to get up on the surgical table, put my feet in the stirrups, and I want to record for a little while and see what happens. And when we listen to the audio later, shortly after she says that, you hear a woman's voice very clearly say, but how would you get there? Ooh. As though she was reminding us that we hadn't figured out yet how we were going to get in there. In the yeah. First place. So there really was no point in talking about what she was <laughs> you, you know what I mean? It's, and it's almost all like that. We we have a, some audio down in the, one of the crew's birthing areas, and the same woman is very concerned about the babies because there were babies born on the ship during that earthquake situation. and very concerned about where they slept. Did they sleep on these racks that the sailors slept on or or what? And when we played the audio later, you hear a very soft but very clear whisper say, no cribs. Oh, that's wild. Yeah, I mean, it's, like I say, it's almost all of that. Yeah. It's almost all contextual. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, and it can be, you know, there are a few spirits that we that we identify with certain areas of the ship. But for the most part, pretty much anything that happens aboard the ship can happen anywhere on the ship. There are some areas that are more active than others. Almost all the areas are interactive. They're, to the best of my knowledge, there are only a couple of residuals on the ship. Uh, almost everything is, is interactive. Some of it is touchy. But again, when I say touchy, I'm not talking about scratches and bites. I'm, I'm talking about a little gravity, a little nudge. Um, nothing, nothing of any kind. A lot of light activity. We had uh, one of the last tours. The ship closes for the winter. One of the last tours we did in November, um, we had a pretty crazy shadow incident where we chased something around for a little while. 
Uh, and then stood and then sat in the room and watched as, as this thing popped back into the room and just kind of stood there next to the door. I mean, to the point where you couldn't see the bottom of the exit sign hmm. because its head was there. Yeah. And, and the girl I was with, I don't know if you met her. She was there the night that we met, Amanda Cook. She was with us the night that we met. And she, she was mad because it, she thought it was a guy. And we were doing an EVP session, and she was like, man, you know, it's really rude not to identify yourself. We're trying to record here. And at some point, I said, you know what, Amanda? I don't think that's a guy. Wow. <laughs> and turned on our phone. Both of us turned on our flashlights, and there was nothing. There was nothing there. It was just gone. Oh, my gosh. Um, that's incredible. And it was crazy, too, because then we heard some footsteps coming down the hallway behind us. And I said to Amanda, oh, that's perfect, because wherever this guy here, and they were footsteps, you know, and I said, wherever this guy came from is where that other dude went, the dude we chased. I don't know where he went, but wherever this guy came from, we'll ask him, because that's where that dude went. But there was nobody there. Um, oh, gosh. And those footsteps were so real, it never even crossed my mind that it wasn't a guy coming down the Never even grew up in my I just assumed it was a guy. That's incredible. Uh, and it's, like I said, they're getting to be more regular all the time. But I, you know, we have the tours, and I always tell people, you know, we don't rig anything, so we can't promise what's going to happen. But it's a pretty rare night when people are disappointed on the same one. It's a pretty rare night. It doesn't happen very often. That's really incredible. Yeah, because that was going to be my next question, is how often do people see stuff? But it sounds like it's... You know, you know, I'm I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say every group we had there this summer through the fall anyway had some kind of crazy experience. We had some people there, the that tour that I made that I was talking about with Amanda and I, the one before that, we were down in the Chief Petty Office's quarters when we heard it sounded like the whole crew running back and forth over our heads. Uh when there was nobody there. I mean, you know, we were the only ones on the ship. And we have that on audio. Um wow. You know, and it's like I said, it's clear as a bell. You can, and and the funny thing about that, and this speaks to the interactive nature of the of the manifestations. One of the women in my group calls. There's another group investigating, and they're at the surgical area I was just talking about. And you hear her on the audio. You hear her say on the radio, "Where are you guys?" And a guy says, "We're at the surgery." And she says, "Do you hear those footsteps?" And he says. I don't know what you're talking about. And she said, above us. You don't hear those footsteps above us? And he said, I don't hear anything. And not, not, no sooner does he say, I don't hear anything, than the footsteps happen again twice as loud. Wow. And he says, oh, man, now I hear him. Wow. <laughs> That's wild. Uh, you know what I mean? I mean, yeah. it's, it's cra- I mean, it's it's at the point where it's, it's crazy. Yeah. Wow. That's incredible. Yeah. I mean, it's... um. It's something else. I mean, it's a privilege for us to be there. Yeah, you know? for sure. And, and I'll say that even though everything I've just told you is absolutely accurate, I still get, I still get chills down my spine. You know what I mean? When it, when it happens, I guess yeah. when, when that stops happening, I probably won't do it anymore. But, <laughs> but, but you know what, you know what I'm saying? I still yes. get these ones. I mean, it's, things happen all the time that just leave me going, holy moly. Yeah, wow. Um, and you know, one of the things too is that, is that we're, we learn when you get familiar with the entities and you start getting a little insight maybe into why they're the way they are. And, you know, I mean, one of my things has always been that, you know, people are people and when they die, they're still the same person emotionally. And you know what I mean? They're, they're still the same. There's a, there's a guy back aft, uh, who we think was a cook. And I think was in charge back there. And he's a pretty nasty guy. He has a tendency to, to be angry a lot. He speaks very badly to women. Uh-huh. And I don't know. I mean, you know, so one of the natural assumptions is, well, he doesn't like women on the ship. I personally, and maybe it's because I was in the Navy. Personally, I think he's just mad that nobody's working. That he's back there and that's his, that's where he works. And he just doesn't understand why the hell nobody else is, is working. Yeah. Um, and, and that kind of thing carries, you know, one of the birthing areas that's under where that dude is, is where the children tend to congregate. 
and it's where the dog is heard a lot. Hmm. And I've often wondered if if that dog doesn't hang around down there because it's concerned about that guy and the kids. Oh yeah, that's interesting. And and you know, it's one of those things. Who knows? But you just why you just wonder why not? I mean, yeah. you know, dogs tend to be protective that way, and for sure. And maybe that's why he's down there because he's he's concerned about that guy and and he wants to protect those kids. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Mm. I don't know. But, um, there's a lot going on here, and that's that's part of the fun. Oh, I believe it. That's kind of fun. Do you ever have mediums come on? Do do mediums pick up anything? Have they talked to people? Sure, we, we've had we've had we've had many since we came to show. Nobody, nobody regular. You know, we, we're we've had people in our group who are a little bit sensitive, but but we've never had anybody regularly come on the ship. I don't want to see. I'm 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 always funny about using names, uh, but a, you know, a good friend of mine who we just talked about a few minutes ago, who's who's here pretty regularly, he's very uncomfortable on the ship. He, really? Yeah, he, he, um, he is, is very uncomfortable on the ship. He thinks that there's, there's way more going on than we even know and that it's not all good. So he's very uncomfortable there. Yeah. He was on the TV show that we were talking about. Okay. Um, so you'll see, you can see that he, cause he talks about that at length. And he was there during that ghost ship harbor thing and he was, he, he fled is what he did. Wow. Uh, just a few weeks in, he said, I can't. Yeah. I can't do this anymore. Uh, so psychics have a difficult time. Yeah, I believe that. There's a lot going on. Yeah, so you actually got on the Travel Channel for their most terrifying places with the show. Yeah, yep. So how did that happen? Did you guys find anything on there? Well, we didn't because that show isn't like there was no – we didn't do any investigating Okay. on that show. That was more of a, you know, did some reenactments and, and that kind of stuff. Actually, that was the guy I was talking about. He's he's a scout, part time does scouting for the Travel Channel, and he pointed them at us. Um, the producer reached out, and we had a great time. Yeah, most terrifying places, and it's on demand. You can you know you can watch it. Had a real good time doing it. I have a whole new respect for those people. I'll tell you that because it was a long day, <laughs> and <laughs> I was exhausted, and all I did was stand around most of the time, oh, uh, especially on the ship. Those guys lugging that stuff up the ladders, and uh, it was it was a long day. It was probably a fourteen or fifteen hour day, but it was good. And and you know I I can unlike you know you watch these shows sometimes, and, and I gotta be honest with you, tell you I never watch any of those shows myself, but but if you do, you, you know. You come away and you go, nah, 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 nah. I can tell you that everything on there was accurate. I mean, um, you know, I told some stories and, and I know they were accurate because I was there. We did reenactments of one of my experiences there. Huh. Um, so yeah, it was, it was good. It was good. And I think I can't say too much, but I think, uh, they're going to be filming something else there in January. Cool. That's awesome. Yeah, I think so. Very interesting. So they, <clears throat> she, the producer said she loved the location and uh, she really liked working with us. So we'll have another shot to to get involved with that. And, um, and you know, we enjoyed it. And, yeah. and it's all publicity for the ship. You know, right. we ship charges $45 a person. That's what we charge for investigations. And, and every penny goes to the ship. We don't, we don't make any money there. You know, we do it because it costs a lot of money to keep that thing afloat, literally. So everything, every penny we get goes right to the ship. And it's, um, it's a beautiful piece of history that if we could keep in Quincy forever, we would certainly like to do it. So For sure. It's all publicity and, and, you know, I don't, I'm not sure some people say no publicity is bad publicity. I don't know whether that's true or not, but I haven't found any bad publicity. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's great. So. If people want to do a tour, I know it's closed now, but mm-hmm. when do you guys open up for business again? We'll be, we'll be opening up probably the middle of March. Oh, really? That soon? Yeah. I mean, you know, the, the ship is a, is a temperature nightmare. Um, I would imagine. Probably yeah. there's, a, there's a period of maybe from the end of March to, to the beginning of maybe the middle of May where it's comfortable. Uh, other than that, it's either a hundred degrees or, or 20 degrees. Yeah. That's a big steel box in the water. Yeah. So in the summertime in particular, it can be really, really tough. But, but yeah, well, I think we'll open probably the middle of March. You know, it's, it's more a matter of, 